Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've had some extra information about what Cloud Imperium have been working on beyond Alpha 3.10 and some more updates coming to the Vandal ships. This is a summary of the official Inside Star Citizen Enemy Mine video. Combat AI, so NPCs running around on the ground and in stations are getting updates. They now have finite ammo and are very much aware of how much ammo they have and when they need to obtain more. So they will go look for ammo when they need to. This has them at the moment being able to find an ammo box which is interactable. They'll grab ammo from it at the moment but in the future this could see them grabbing ammo from the floor or from a body or maybe changing their weapons for something else that's nearby. The 100 series of Origin Starter Ships is going to be flyable in 3.11 at least that's its target at the moment. They're currently getting the grey box for those ships finished off and then pushed into final art. This will give us some additional starter ship choices uh, for players, but also starter ships may be suitable for other gameplay that's not just beginning the game with. Their price and focus might cause them to be used for a meta in certain situations or missions or shuttles or something. They've built a weapon and item rack for the Gladius. It's externally accessible from the ship, so you can put your weapons and, and that sort of stuff in there and then take them out. It's going to be available in Alpha 3.10. Weapons racks, and item accessibility cupboards and all that sort of stuff is going to be really important once we have physicalized inventories because we're not going to be able to carry everything around with us anymore. We're going to have to put it in storage. We're going to have to have our, our gear uh, if we want to change into it on our ships, things like that. They also showed off a new dashboard and UI for the Gladius that looks fantastic. All the little switches are going to have function. These cockpit interactions will see more work for the next quarter and hopefully we'll have them in the game in the not too distant future. Refinery decks are planned for 3.11. This is a whole set of new facilities and functionality for stations that get these refinery decks. They're in the early grey box phase at the moment, but they're super industrial with smelting and uh, mining equipment around. They provide mining and refinery services, missions and gear. That's the idea here, a one-stop shop for mining and refining services. And along with cargo decks that are also planned for 3.11 should see the expansion of industrial and economy and trade gameplay sort of like all moving forwards really really excited for, for all of that especially when it comes to, to the gameplay loops it's going to provide fire propagation has evolved and they've been working on like a simulation for it that uses and tracks fuel amount smoke temperature the type of object that's on fire and then realistically grows I really like the idea of fire propagation the idea of fire suppression is awesome as well and i suspect this is going to be closely tied to missions salvage and repair once they finished all these fire tests i'm hoping that they start to look at how to put fires out maybe uh, work continues on the pyro system as well that new star system that will be the the first additional star system that we get beyond the stanton system pyro 2 the planet there has large bodies of water now and they're looking at changing potentially some of its background because there's more going on with it now. Originally the planet was supposed to have been picked clean uh, mineral deposit wise and sort of like leaving the planet as like an empty husk though they said they're going to be looking at the lore for that planet and some of the other bits of the pyro system because they, they want to have a bit of gameplay there. I suspect the pyro crab as well, the giant terrifying one we saw recently on the alien animals inside Star Citizen will appear there at some point. What we're seeing at the moment is just early work and it's going to see updates and changes to, to the planet and all the other planets in the Pyro system for that matter. But we don't know if Pyro is still pegged to be released in 2020 or not. Hopefully CIG will come out with a statement on that in the future. There was a lot shown recently on the Vandal ships. Their art has evolved over the years and their ships have seen updates. And when they built out the Kingship interior for Squadron 42's needs, that giant capital ship for the Vandal, Cloud Imperium then decided to apply the style for that ship to all the other Vandal ships, getting them up to spec and the sort of like new styles that they had with it. They explored lots of material types and styles for the Vandal. Deep sea creatures and creepy crawlies influenced the Vandal ships and race. Vandal ships have silhouettes inspired by birds of prey. Vandal scavenge weapons and tech from the battlefield and from raids, which influenced their style too. Apparently, the idea as well is that Vandal ships are, and I'm not sure if the, the dev misspoke when he said this, Vandal ships are armoured more on the top because they glide down at their targets 
from sort of like like a hawk from a position of power coming down at them and are able to sort of like dodge where they're getting shot at so they don't need armor underneath their ship. I think that's what they implied and said. That doesn't make much sense to me because I'd want to be armored where I'm aiming towards. IRL tanks, for example, they armor their fronts because that's what's going to get shot the most because that's the way they're pointing the most. But the, the look of the new Vandal ships is absolutely fantastic. The blade... That's pretty similar to the current human blade. The only real difference here is the sort of seat. The Vandal cockpits are different from the human versions of the Vandal ships because Vandal are larger than humans and they sit in their seats more like a human would sit in a bike. The new scythe has changed significantly, so the weapons aren't integrated directly into the ship's hull like the old scythe was anymore. Asymmetry is still a major design choice with the scythe, but they also wanted the scythe to look a little more balanced visually than previously. They also wanted it to be much more of a medium fighter with armor plates, still more agile than human um, medium fighters though, and obviously the blade is that very, very sleek, um, nimble fighter. The glaive now looks amazing, much more unique than it previously was. It's not just a scythe with a, a extra wing or full-on wing now, it is very much its own ship. You're going to see the more elite, dangerous Vandal pilots um, flying these glaives very much looking forward to them being updated in the game. Those ships where those massive changes will be updated in the Persistent Universe in a future patch, but we don't know exactly when. And that's it for a development update. We're still waiting on the 3.10 PTU to go to wider PTU. It's currently with Eva Carti. We are looking at a 3.10 live release at some point in July, though I'm actually expecting it first week of July, um, because that just sort of makes the most sense at the moment, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm interested to know what you think of those Vandal ships, though, and how Cloud Imperium have improved them. I actually think they look a magnitude better at least, although I'm not a fan of constant reworks. Some reworks, like these, actually pay off at least. Do you think the Pyro system could still be a release in 2020? Are you excited for Alpha 3? 3.10 or 3.11 whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you want to get involved in my channel giveaway as well it's for a prowler it was given to me by cloud imperium thanks very much for that all you got to do is comment on any of my videos made during june to be in for a chance of winning that also lots of shill links down below if you're looking for vpn nord vpns there bam click on that use that discounts boom vpn better than a free service uh, and also shadow gaming pcs for using the power of the internet and leveraging there so they don't have to own your own gaming pc you can just use a subscription service there which could save you a lot of money it means you don't have to maintain your own hardware boom